Hey guys, so as the title says, today I'm going to share with you guys how I removed scar tissue and got rid of a cyst that was living on my ovary naturally. Before I get into this video, I just want to leave a quick disclaimer. I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a fertility group guru, none of that. I cannot and will not ever give anyone medical advice. I advise everybody to talk to their doctor before making any changes that's going to affect your body. I am simply sharing with you guys the steps that I did to help me and my body for my wife and I's fertility journey. Period. If you choose to try the things that I've done, that is totally up to you. Um, if it does not work, I'm sorry. I cannot guarantee whether or not it worked because your body and my body are two different things. So they're going to react different to different situations. So with saying all that, let's get it. So back in August, you guys know I had a laparoscopy surgery to remove a crazy amount of scar tissue that was causing my right and only tube to close. Um, the best way to describe it, it was kind of op still open, but the entry was so tight, it was difficult for anything to get through. So kind of think of it as balling your hand up. You see it's a hole right there and it's a hole under there. In your mind, you think if you pour the water in here, it's going to automatically come straight out the bottom. That's what it's supposed to do. For my tube, what will happen is you can pour the water on top and it will start to spill over because it was so tight for the water to get in. Most of the water will spill off and then a drip will come out. That's the best way to describe my tube. So my gynecologist and my fertility doctor worked together and they decided that the best thing for me was to have the surgery. Um, my fertility doctor could not even understand why I didn't have this surgery before starting IVF treatment, but that was a totally different doctor back then. So the things he did, none of it was right. So I had the surgery and with laparoscopies, I'm not sure if you guys know how that works. They put a camera through your navel and then they cut another portion of your stomach and that's the area where the tube goes, well not tube, the utensil goes in so they can cut and pull out whatever they need to. So while they were in there removing scar tissue and cleaning it up in there, my gynecologist discovered that I had a large cyst just chilling on my ovary. The cyst was the size of a grapefruit. They chose not to remove it that day because that wasn't the type of surgery that they prepped me for. Um, it's no way that they would have been able to safely remove that through my navel or the small hole and cutting somewhere else in the middle of another surgery would have put me at risk of bleeding out or having a hysterectomy. So it wasn't worth it the best decision was to just let it be monitor it i went for my follow-up with my fertility doctor in september um she told us basically because of the cyst that's sitting on my ovary she does not recommend iui at all um she think it would be very difficult and she also felt like we should try removing the cyst before even doing IVF treatment. My wife asked her if it was any natural options she could recommend for us to try to assist us with that. No doctor is going to tell you any type of natural anything to do. You know, doctors, they sign prescriptions and they write referrals. That's it. They're never going to say, girl, go eat these berries off of this oak tree and you're going to get pregnant. No, that's never going to happen. Um, what our doctor said to us was she couldn't recommend anything in particular to us because that was unethical for her to do, but she's not opposed to us trying any natural products that we choose as long as it's safe. So my wife and I, we did started a, to do a lot of research. 
Um, I found that although a lot of us women are, we get easily offended when fertility doctors say, okay, I recommend you lose 10 pounds or I recommend you lose 15 pounds or 20 pounds, however amount of pounds you need to lose. Our research showed that a lot of women who have lost weight, um, that did increase their chances of getting pregnant from like a five to a 20. So I went on a weight loss journey. I started eating better. I changed my eating habits. I changed the way I ate. And I started going to the gym a little bit at that time. So it was time for my first follow-up sonogram. I went, the, the cyst was about a half centimeter bigger. So my gynecologist started the, the whole discussion with me of taking it out. And she had to lay down the possibility of me possibly losing my entire uterus. So after that, I really went into research mode. I found this young lady on YouTube who unblocked her tubes by using this Chinese tea and it worked for her um, and someone else. So I ordered that. Um, it was quite a few women on YouTube who use Yanni Pearls. And it worked for them. You know, they had fertility issues prior to using the pearls. And afterwards, they got pregnant just like that. So I ordered them. I started taking vitamins. I take vitamin D, turmeric, iron, chastaberry, and it's one more. I can't remember. And I started to drink the tea. And when I drunk the tea, I did that for about a month or so. And then it was time for me to have my next sonogram. I went in for my next sonogram. The scar tissue had deteriorated. It started to deteriorate a little. And the cyst was half the size it once was. So it went from being the size of a grapefruit to the size of maybe an orange or a tangerine. So after that, you know, this whole time I had these Yanni pearls just chilling and I'm just like, I was kind of scared to put the stuff in it because they got a little smell to them, kind of smell like cut grass or something or the way, you know, your grass smell after you first cut it and then it rains. That's what the Yanni pearls smell like to me and I'm allergic to like life. <laughs> so um, I was a little nervous to try them, but I did. And I kept one pearl in for 48 hours, took that out, put another pearl in, kept that in for 48 hours, took that out. And then after a few days, my vagina purged. I'll put a video in the description box as well as links to everything I use in the prescription box. Um, but I'll put a video as to the one I watched that made me want to buy them. And I'll link my video, my review on them at the end. Um, my vagina ultimately did a purge. It released um, something that kind of was had the consistency of plastic. I later found out from my doctor that it was um, a lot of dead skin and dead cells and things like that. So I did that, went back for a sonogram, and it gotten smaller. I kept doing these things throughout this time, drinking the tea. I haven't used the Yanni Pearl again, but I've been drinking the tea. I've been taking my vitamins every day. I've been going to the gym. I added the gym. Um, if you want to lose weight, you have to exercise. You can't get away from it. So I joined the gym. I try to go to the gym four times a week at the minimum two. And I kept drinking the tea. I kept drinking the pregnancy tea. I went back for my last sonogram yesterday and my tube is open and the cyst is completely gone. My doctor, she doesn't know if it's gone because of the Yanni pearls. She cannot tell me that's what did it. She don't know if the tea is what opened Got rid of a, a lot of the scar tissue and got rid of the cysts. She doesn't know. 
she does know that weight loss can tr contribute to that. A lot of cysts and fibroids and things like that feed off like fatty tissues and things like that. So she don't know if that was the deciding factor because I've lost a substantial amount of weight. I went from being 200 and about 249 pounds to yesterday when she was weighed, when she weighed me, I'm 218. Although I still feel like I look like I'm 249 pounds, I'm 218. Um, so she don't know which one of those things is what was the deciding factor of getting rid of the cysts and clearing out the scar tissue. All she knows is as of right now, this very moment, my tube is the clearest it has been this entire journey. And the cyst that was sitting on my ovary is completely gone. It's no need for surgery. Is no need for them to give me a hysterectomy. Um, and she is completely comfortable with telling me that she can see me getting pregnant now because of this with IUI or IVF, which is great because with our insurance, we have six IUIs available that we can do, which the insurance will pay for. Um, we have no IV IVFs left that the insurance will pay for. Um, so if we do IVF, it will be out of pocket and we're looking at close to $20,000. So what you think we go try first? <laughs> I do not want to write no $20,000 check. It's one of those situations where you're blessed to be able to do something, but just because you can do it, that doesn't mean you want to do it. So um, that's, what I that's what happened. That is my fertility update all in one nutshell in a nutshell. Um, again, I will link everything below. If you have some questions, I'll try my best to answer them. I don't know if I'll have all the answers because honestly, I just Google some things, research some things, and I just pray for the best. It's one of them situations, um, like I told you guys many times with fertility, pray for the best, but prepare for the worst and we just did whatever we could, hoped it would work, and it actually worked. So until next time, I'm going to talk to you guys later. Bye.